All right, welcome back. So actually, there was this report which we did have yesterday about this was the uh, court decision in River State uh, on the PDP matter, which affirmed uh, the Matinee Molele group as the speaker, nullifying the budget presented by the governor to another group. So that also is a reverse matter, which is part of what we're going to consider at this point. We've got here with us Mr. Brahma Dulai, who now acting National, National Publicity Secretary. This broke over overnight. Yes. This uh, developing story. So uh, what they say, breaking overnight. So uh, good morning. Thank you for coming today. My pleasure. So lots of people woke up to that, wondering what is going on. So your statement, which you also put up uh, early this morning. So I'm just going to try and see if uh, we could just have it on the screen and then read it out to a lot of people who may not have seen it. So it went on to read, arising from its 53rd meeting, 10th October 2024, the National Working Committee has suspended the National Publicity Secretary and the National Legal Advisor of the party pending the determination and allegations of disloyalty, which is in caps, and insubordination also in caps, leveled against the door. In the meantime, the deputies in the respective directorates, Ibrahim Abdullah, yourself, and Barisa Okechuku Osoha have stepped in in acting capacity, signed Ibrahim Abdullah Manga, acting National Publicity Secretary, PDP. But no long after that, lots of people now saw another message circulating uh, from Mr. Debo himself. And so we're also going to see how we can bring that up for lots of people to also see and see how we're trying to put that in context. So the heading of his message was press release on the decision of the National Working Committee and WC of the PDP on the reported anti-party activity by the acting national chairman, Ambassador Ilya Damagun, and National Secretary Senator Sam Samuel Anyo. So he goes on to say, uh, the National Working Committee and WC of the PDP have extensively <coughs> considered the series of complaints raised against the acting national chairman, Damagun, national secretary. And so, but basically here, it's a pretty long read, but he is just saying, look, let me take this back. Consequently, he says, the NWC, pushed to section 57, 58, and 59 of the PDP constitution, has suspended Ambassador Ilya Damagu and Senator Sam Anyao as acting national chairman and national secretary of the party, respectively, and refer them to the National Disciplinary Committee for further action. So we have your statement suspending them and his own statement also suspending the acting chairman. So now break it down for us. What's going on? Well, Chamberlain, thank you very much for having me. Um, the response by my colleague and the the suspended uh, National Publicity Secretary uh, is unfortunate. It wasn't expected because as a lawyer and a very senior one at that, one would have expected him to be guided by the ethics of the profession and the rule of law. He would have known before coming up with this that you don't react when you are in suspension and he doesn't have the locus. The moment you are said to be suspended, you cease to act you know, on behalf of the party. In any case, Debo, as I speak with you, is not even within the shores of Africa. He's not in Nigeria. So yesterday, uh, we took this decision uh, out arising, like I told you, uh, or like I sent out uh, this morning from the uh, 593rd you know, executive session of the National Working Committee. And that was where the decision was taken unanimously by everybody, including his colleague, uh, the National Legal Advisor, who should have the legal knowledge you know, to act in that regard if yeah, it was necessary for any rejoinder to be uh, expected from them. But he guided by law and Debo himself, a very senior lawyer, one would have expected him to know that he doesn't have the locals whatsoever. Where was the meeting held? Who were the signatories to the meeting? Where was uh, that NWC convened? And therefore, there, there's no basis whatsoever for that to be attracting even uh, the attention of the media with due respect because it's uh, neither here nor there. It's, uh, when someone is drowning, he tends to bring that kind of a problem. Part of what he argues is that the suspension, his suspension, and uh, his colleague, he says, claims that it was erroneously done. It was illegal because he was not invited whatsoever to explain or to ask him questions, say, look, put my offense before me, 
and asked me questions and had me respond, but he just suddenly heard that his response and said, look, had the group even convened in the first place, that mm. that was not right. That, 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 that the excellent provision, the relevant section he, he was quoting in his own purported uh, suspension of the national chairman and the national secretary suffices here in this regard to answer this question. Because what the National Working Committee did was to say that they will step aside you and the National Legal Advisor and a, and a competent committee headed by Deputy Governor and now uh, the Vice Amazonal, uh, sorry, the Deputy National Chairman South, His Excellency uh, Taufi Karapaja, to now within two weeks look into the allegations leveled against Debo and his colleague. Within that period, we would have uh, invited him and then the, the attention he's seeking would be given to him for him to respond. We, nobody is suspending him or anything. We are just asking him to step aside or dismiss him rather. Nobody is dismissing him, but it's merely a suspension to provide for the opportunity for him to be invited to come and account for the allegations leveled against him. And so within the period, this is going to you know, take, one was not expecting they were to come up with a counter suspension. In any case, why will it wait until uh, uh, he was suspended for him to now say he is also coming up with a counter suspension outside of the country and f devoid of any known uh, legal bag uh, background for him to come up with this. So your guess so, is as good as mine. It's just an uh, effort in futility. What about the legal advisor? Was he present? Because yeah, he was present at the meeting. He himself was there when the votes were taken, and um, everybody in the, except himself voted against uh, their continuous uh, stay there without uh, experiencing this um, or going under this um, investigation. So, what, what is this? What is the cause of this suspension? It has to do with allegations leveled against them. One of it was, um, uh, even though I'm coming up later with press statement where the details will be brought to your knowledge, but then in the meantime, allegations around uh, taking decision against the collective you know, interests of the party. We had as a party agreed that we were not going to take part in the local government elections in Rivers just yet, like many other states. My state, Kebi, Katsina and many other states came up with excuses that they were ill-prepared. They were not fully prepared to partake in the election. And therefore, as we went waiting for the options to be explored, uh, Debo went out of his way to make a statement against a resolution of the party. I mean, and in the case of the legal advisor, there were several uh, allegations leveled against him himself. One is, it, is it that statement where he says, go for local government election, PDP charges reverse states? Uh, that's, it. that's it. That's oh. it. That was a resolution that, I mean, it was against the resolution that the party took with Debo in attendance that we are not yet decided on whether or not we will participate in the primaries on account of, you know, the mounting uh, problems that we are contending with in, in rivers on the one hand. And then secondly, because we needed to also clear this table, there were so many uh, complaints arising from uh, the protracted, you know, uh, problem that uh, rivers is experiencing. And therefore, we needed to be sure we were prepared, not just rivers, a lot of states, like I cited the example uh -huh. earlier, Kebi, Katsina, and many others. They came all out, and in you know, some states, there were feuding parties that said, okay, they would go, some would say no. And when we look at those issues, we will now be guided accordingly and say, no, let's stay away from the election. Otherwise, we will do ourselves damage like it, we ended up doing in a river state. Hmm. Do you fear now that this could be the beginning of a division in your party? Because... I Clearly, it doesn't appear that Mr. Olubwagba is acting on his own. It does appear that he does have some support uh, from within members of your party. That will not be correct. I doubt if there's anybody supporting him um, in the meantime. People that we even thought in the beginning were going to lend their sympathy in his cause turned out yesterday to vote against him. And they were saying that, look, it's better the party go united. We have had a lot of problems. We've dominated the NWC media. meeting yes, or at the NWC. NWC and BOT? No, at the NWC. The BOT did not take part in that voting. BOT was looking at other issues around the party. It held earlier and the NWC was later in the evening. And then it came up with this decision. Everyone except the legal advisor, who himself ended up being a victim of the decision, you know, voted against uh, Debo. Mm. So you do not see your party going, you know, their own separate, you don't see it splitting. This causing a, a real rift between, you know, members of your party? No, 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 no. The Especially if we were to look at the situation in Rivers, because we've seen quite a number of prominent people within your party, uh, you know, like I say, rejoice at the situation in Rivers, especially with the governor having the upper hand in the local government elections. Uh, give us one week from today. I will tell you in confidence that um, even this morning, uh, the seeming dif 
differences that was existing between uh, the leadership of the NWC in acting capacity led by Ambassador Damagun and the position that the governor of uh, Bauchi was maintaining uh, have given way. Because this morning, the governor of Bauchi had invited Damagun for us to look at all of those problems that have continued to militate against our smooth running of the party. Lately, you would have uh, followed the event where the chairman of the governor's forum, I mean, PDP governor's forum, the governor of Bauchi, was taking a position, and he was in reverse himself, in person, mm -hmm. you know, to support uh, uh, the governor of yeah. for mm -hmm. the emergency. But this morning, he's calling to understand that, look, the survival of the party, cohesion and unity, is more important than all of this little in-house bickering, which seems to have affected when Nigerians, on the other hand, are suffering from this despair and despondency in the land, led mm -hmm. by the clueless and inept APC. But isn't that going to be somewhat challenging? Because what people see is, uh, because, I mean, usually... Uh, maybe correct this if it's wrong. When the BOT, uh, when they meet, and if you're going to have an NWC, so members of the BOT who are also members of NWC, after the BOT finishes, leave, mm. then uh, those who are NWC members in BOT stay back and then yeah. NWC meeting holds. Yeah. So when this meeting then held, and people also previously saw the Bauchi State Governor, they've heard his narrative before, mm. and then they also saw him in Rivers mm. after the election went, mm. and so something about... He's presiding over what APP members who uh, who got in as um, local government chairman in the state. Mm. How is the party? Are you, I know you say <coughs> PDP will find a way to manage all of this, but the danger is that if not properly handled, how is the party going to handle the fact that APP members are local government chairman in River State? And that with the recent court judgment, it's possible that if you don't find a way, reverse may be the perhaps sort of Damocles for the PDP. No, no, no. We still have uh, our governor in full control of the state, um, Sim Fubara. And the last time I checked, he's still allegiant to the PDP, regardless of the fact that uh, we had a disappointing outcome in the local government election, allegedly supported by him to produce APP local government chairman. But all of them, if that line of thought is correct, then it means we're still in charge because it's a PDP governor who, you know, buffered the, the APP go, uh, local government chairman. Is that not anti-party activity? And that is the meaning of anti-party in your understanding. But then what do you now ask the governor of Bauchi, who himself witnessed and encouraged and even passed a commentary I mean, uh, in favor of the outcome. Okay, so, so what does anti-party mean to you then? Yeah. Since, since, since your, your, it is your the party. reason all along we've been very careful not to uh, slam the sledgehammer against all of those persons that have been alleged to have, in, uh, you know, partook in one way or the other in anti-party or sabotage the chances of the PDP in the build-up to the 2023 election. And the, 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 the major uh, dramatist person out there had always been the city minister of the FCT. You will recall that even in this studio, I have severely argued with you on the need for us to trade cautiously. And that's what this NWC had done since it came about under Ambassador Omar Ilya Damagu. We refrained from what obtained hitherto, where uh, the IU-led NWC would just wake up every morning, you know, slamming suspension on our members. And that, in part, led to our loss of the election in 2023, because we would not have lost P2B on the one hand. We would not have lost Kwakwaso in Kano. We wouldn't have lost Shema, uh, Namani, and... Uh, uh, several others. These persons were very important in the party, and the loss of them, you know, counted seriously against our fortune, and we are guided by that. And that's why, even with the mounting uh, pressure on us to slam suspension on uh, Inyosa Mwiki, you know, we've been guided, because we, it wasn't justified for us to go that way. Uh, and now a committee is in place, like you know, two of them actually, one for reconciliation and the other for dialogue, to see to it that all of these issues mountaineers as they are, you know, are brought on the table, we review to addressing them accordingly. Are you sure you'll be able to do that uh, in good time? Because some people say there's too much, too much water has gone under the bridge uh -huh. um, in, in, in the case of the PDP, and that, you know, there's been too much division. They don't think that the PDP can actually reconcile. It's a question of uh, belief, but uh, Mark, where you would see the PDP, I've always argued, is still the only political party throughout Nigerian history that has lasted 25 years unbroken. You know, within that period, it provided governance for Nigeria for 16 years. And we did that under a single digit, you know, inflation. We've been able to stabilize the economy, created the anti-corruption agencies that are even today deployed against, you know, dissenting voices um, in this country. We've been able to stabilize. We got debt cancellation. We lifted Nigeria. It was a pariah status as 
as at the time uh, PDP took over in 1999. But before Obasanjo concluded his eight years, Nigeria had regained its place in the Committee of Nations and so many other things, you know, where PDP was able to do. So PDP will defy the odds, rest assured. We will come out triumphant. We are accustomed to this crisis. We've gone through worse crises than this. And we've been able to come You've out. You've gone through worse crises than oh, this out you, of power at the center? Yeah, you would recall in 2016, we were with a Modu Sharif crisis. It was uh, one crisis that we thought was going to consume the party, or Nigerians thought. But we journeyed and navigated through the waters and came out uh, unscattered. We went through Makarfi in Broglio, if you recall, and then the Secondos own. So it's something that is inherent, it's expected, it's natural with political party. I've always argued that management of home front is even a difficult task for, for individuals now, not to now talk of a political party where interest is uh, what seems to be the guiding principle. So you don't expect these things to go uh, seamlessly without these oh. difficulties that we are contending. But we will come out uh, mm. rest a short time. I, I, what I really want to share your optimism. Some people will say that uh, when you look at the history which you have just traced, it will seem that it's been one thing on top of another. So when a, a, an injury or a wound should have healed, it will seem that when another crisis happens, it removes the scab of the wound that was healing and then digs that particular wound even deeper. And mm. I think that's where the danger really lies for the PDP. Would you agree with that analysis? Yes, it's correct. I will agree with you. But then again, the internal mechanism that we have in place, and we've been deploying them so far to journey through these 25 years in question. All of those other parties that were formed alongside the PDP in 1998 have either fizzled out or metamorphosed into some platforms, including the, you know, the uh, ruling party, the APC, to form government in 2014. So it's only PDP that hasn't changed its name, texture, color, and objectives. We remain the same, and we are going to come out triumphant, rest assured. By the end of uh, this year and uh, first quarter of next year, you will see PDP uh, united once again with that common front and determination to forge ahead at least to salvage Nigeria from this uh, hopelessness that seems to have pervaded the land. Yeah. How does PDP handle members like uh, Honorable Ugo Chinere? Because he's also circulating messages that PDP NWC has suspended the acting chairman Damagun orders and is calling on North Central to meet immediately to present acting chairman before the next NEC meeting. He needs to be guided. He's a lawmaker. He sits in the hollow chamber there as a legislator and one of our respected members. By the way, a young man, he should be guided by rules of engagement, not to be inciting flames where none exist. So, watching here is not taken with the seriousness he needs to be taken in this regard. So, he needs to be guided accordingly. So, the, there's no, uh, at least, he's not going to be invited for anything whatsoever. So only those who have been suspended are the ones who are supposed to come and answer questions. Well, certainly. They have within the next two weeks to do so. And if they are vindicated from the allegations leveled against them, they will be restored in their position. Or well, anything short of that, your guess will be as good as mine. Meaning what? They'll be expelled from the party? Oh, certainly. Well, That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. Mm. I am. We certainly have well, questions. Well, mm -hmm. Yes, thank you so much, um, Mokwe. Well, let me begin, Mr. Abdullahi, with, Mr. Abdullahi, with some of the responses so far from uh, Mr. Logwagwa. Speaking with us at Channels Television, one of the things he says that he never attended any meeting where his suspension was mentioned, nor was he ever confronted with any allegations of anti-party activities. Can you corroborate that? Yeah, but that's the reason he is taking suspension uh, only yesterday, so that he will come around. In any case, you don't allow uh, someone that is going through an allegation to continue to uh, preside over, you know, the position that he's occupying. Now that he is said to be suspended, within 14 days, he's expected to present himself to the committee. By, and I decided by one of his colleagues, our colleague, you know, the Deputy National mm -hmm. Chairman, Saud you know, uh, Taufik Haragwaja. His Excellency would give them the opportunity alongside his committee to come and, you know, present their arguments. And if they are logical enough to convince us that uh, he truly did not take part in things that will amount, you know, to suspension, he gets reinstated immediately. Uh, don't forget so many of them, I didn't want to go into details. I would uh, present some of them later in the day as I address the press call at the Secretariat. You know, uh, we have allegations of even uh, conducting or hosting a meeting, you know, at the instance of the governor of Ondo State. And you needed to see how, from yesterday uh, through this morning, how Ondo State uh, PDP 
uh, went into jubilatory mode to say that uh, one of their major problems had always been Ologunagwa, you know, my, my respected colleague. And uh, some of the details will be made available in due course. And in the meantime, we are, we are, we are restrained to mm. ensure that uh, the committee is not uh, preempted so that they will discuss elaborately with him and finding him, uh, um, uh, you know, innocent, he's back on his seat. Hmm. Was he ever confronted with these allegations? Because it would seem like it's one of those um, media announcements that, I mean, it, some would consider it a little embarrassing to hear of your suspension on just like everybody else, just get the information like everyone else. Meanwhile, um, he, he, so question is, was he ever served a letter, a notice, uh, at least to even defend himself, even before he, he got any notice of suspension? Was there any notice sent to him? Ayo, this is the level that is to be done. Once there's allegation, and I can tell you here that we've received several of them. There has been warning even before now, twice on personal ground. This is verbally, you know, by the leadership to ensure that he is guided on some of the conducts that he has been put in. His disposition lately suggests that the party is divided. And I think uh, Chamberlain made, uh, I did allude to that earlier, that uh, it appears that uh, the party has been divided lately, some persons pursuing different objectives from the collective whole. Uh, that cannot be correct. And if we allow this to go, you know, unaddressed, it will lead to a problem later, and then the same media will take us and Nigerians will lose confidence in the PDP further. So it is an action that we're taking quick enough to survey the situation by ensuring that while he is on suspension, within two weeks, he will be expected to have faced the committee, and that committee is in the position to vindicate him against those suspicions or uh, confirm them uh, accordingly. And if that is the case, it will be unfortunate. Hmm. Well, he... Is it true? Uh, can you, are you then saying that it is not correct what he said, that the PDP is fashionalized? Well, that's a relative term, depending on what his understanding of fashionalization means. But as far as we are concerned, we are united, we are cohesive. We have not even been as united as uh, we are now in recent past. You would remember I, state, uh, I stated earlier the kind of uh, suspensions that the party kept getting. It was that disunity that led us to lose the election the way we did in 2023. Some people were for this, some people for whatever. We had several quarters and several interests to pursue. And that disunity led, whether you accept it or not, uh, us into that failure. The election may have been rigged, but it was because of that disunity and, uh, you know, what do you call it, disaffection in the party, in the manner that we went uh, to 2023 election, that created the platform or ambience for you know, the ruling party to do the, the, the damage that they did to us by ensuring that they rigged the house and they penetrated the PDP and did uh, this monumental damage to us. But by the time uh, Ambassador Umar Ilya Damagun took over in acting capacity, we started bringing back the house. We started uniting, even in the face of mounting pressure, suspend this person, do this thing. He has been indulged in, uh, he has indulged in anti-party, he has done this. So we just aggregated all of those complaints and you could see it's over one year now. We've kept the party going united. Uh, but you saw the election in Edo, uh, the, the kind of uh, impressive uh, show that we put in there. Uh, but for the PDP's uh, overwhelming determination to ensure that democracy does not live in this country. And they stole that victory. The PDP or the APC? The APC. You said PDP. Oh, apologies, sorry. The APC's determination to ensure that uh, democracy is truncated. Uh, but we are in court, we are going to retrieve our mandates because every discerning mind in this country has seen that kind of um, a rooftop uh, or broad daylight robbery, which will not stand in the face of law. Mm. Now, the issue you talked about, the disaffection, leads to the question, uh, well, the comments made by the governor of um, Oyo State um, when he talked about the, the fact that the national leadership of your party needs to adopt what he calls a comprehensive approach in implementing the recommendations of its reconciliation committee. Perhaps that is also part of the reason why anyone would talk about uh, the, what you call disaffection is what some people could be calling factionalization, wouldn't you say? That's why I say it's a relative term, depending on your understanding. But then mischief makers are taking it beyond uh, its definition and boundaries to give it an impression that it does not require. And every discerning mind in the country is understanding it for what it is. 
uh, it's not actually uh, what they think. It's not what they want the world to believe that the world will believe in. PDP is not in the bad light that it is presented, and Nigerians know so. Uh, the, the, the desperation in the APC to ensure that it breaks our ranks so that we don't remain united, but we will defy the odds like we've always done, and we'll come out triumphant, face the election of 2027, and win it for Nigerians and bring back Nigeria into its glory days mm. yet again. So what is the plan for that reconciliation um, move to be concluded? Because as you know, first of all, it's a long time coming. Secondly, it has robbed the PDP of at least two major, two general elections. So it's taken so long. And people will be wondering, with all of that disaffection within the party, the, the PDP is not able to play the role of its main opposition party. It's not going to be as easy as you sound, Ayo. It's a very, very Herculean task. And what is even more Herculean is when you begin to have I mean, uh, difficulties in managing a position that the party is taking, like the present one at hand, that we are expecting to put the house together and then forge the, the problem, the common enemy. But then you have people who are going with dissenting views within the same party. And that constitutes clog on the wheel of progress if we allow it. So what we just realized we should do is what we have done sanction these people by way of calling them to come and explain uh, their action and inaction and why they think that is the way to go. And like I told you, it doesn't mean nothing. When these people are cleared from these allegations, they will be let back into their office. Uh, we are a very united department, the publicity, and I'm sure the legal like that. Uh, we are going to continue to pursue the objectives of the party, devoid of uh, rank or violence and outrages. We would remain restrained and to ensure that uh, we pursue the common enemy uh, until we get to the finish line. The common then, enemy, and that will be? The common enemy is APC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tinobu-led APC federal government that has succeeded in bringing Nigeria back to Stone Age. It is going to be very interesting how to see you do that, because right now, one of your very prominent members, a man who we say is at the heart of this crisis, is currently working for the APC government. But he is not... the minister <laughs> of the federal capital territory, and uh, there's no way you can criticize the current president without some of the stones or the shots getting to him. But you would also agree he's the most outstanding minister today in the park. That tells you what PDP is about. It yes, was yes. for that same reason that they saw the quality in PDP and invited him over to come and serve. And he has made it very clear to the PDP and the leadership, the zonal, the national, and everywhere that, look, you guys should advise, do I go and accept this assignment? And the party ratified that, yes, you can, if it is for the benefit of Nigerians. A mark way between you and I, it has turned out to be for the benefit of Nigeria. We had a minister who sat in that capacity for eight years without changing even the street lights in town. What is Abuja looking like now in just one year? So if it is going to be for the benefit of the country, and it has turned out so, no, you, we'll you, let you him go. You don't think that whatever it is that he achieves with you know, the Tinubu-led administration does, you know, makes it then difficult for you to criticize and dismiss the APC-led administration as you would want to? No, in the part where the government is doing well, we will give it uh, their credit, and we have been doing so. And certainly in the FCT, uh, you say it's historically taken us back to the Stone Age. I imagine that those who live in the FCT in do, the other sectors are also of the academy, the Stone Age. We, yes, certainly mm -hmm. there, we have had increase in the security surge, insecurity in this country. We have had other issues that are biting hard, economy and whatever. All of these things are the failures of the uh, uh, Tinubu led central government. But in the part of the FCT, mm -hmm. where yes, um, as in, uh, 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 Wiki is uh, supervising. He has done just very well. You don't no think person in this country, not even Erufai, who set a very impressive foundation, has achieved as much as in years of one year. For some people, they're going to say that whatever it is that this current PDP uh, leadership has is currently constituted, no matter what it does, it, it's going to be very difficult for them to see reconciliation in the offing because as far as they're concerned, this uh, leadership is actually uh, working with the current minister of the FCT. That cannot be correct. It's an allegation. And if substantiated beyond reasonable, that we will accept it. But in the meantime, it's just uh, within the realms of speculation. How it's do you not... qualify your stance in Rivers? Say again? How do you qualify the stance of the PDP in Rivers? PDP is there. PDP is still in the safe hand of the governor. And then, of course, Wiki is a leader, a national leader of the party. And then by the time we go into this unity that we are saying we are going to do on reconciliation and what have you, even the committee, as I speak with you, are living in the Southwest today. They've been there for days now trying to put all these feuding parties back 
on the table and see how we could resolve the problems amicably. So certainly we'll come out triumphant. I think it was Chemele who asked you about anti-party and how do you define that? Because you've suspended Mr. Logan, but even though he hasn't answered uh, to the, you know, the issues that you have brought, you say that's one of the ways, it's the first step. It's mm. the first step. You know, he's mm. going to be invited to, mm. you know, answer allegations against him. But you have suspended him based on an action that he took. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, is, there, is it the only one whom you're going to be suspending? Is, is it the only one who has taken actions that seem like anti-party activity? Even this one in suspended? question, he wasn't, the one, he wasn't the only one suspended. The legal advisor, national legal advisor, a lawyer over three decades standing is also suspended. Mm. And then before him, you are aware of uh, uh, Chief Dan Obi, High Chief Dan Obi, the Zona Vice Chairman of the South South, has been also in suspension for months now. So it's something that the party will not waste time. Within the powers of the NWC, if it can suspend somebody, especially its members, as provided by Section 56, 57, and 59. That you say if it can suspend somebody, in other words, there are people it can suspend? Oh, certainly. There are people that are with beyond the suspension of the NWC. It will require the involvement of the other organs of government, particularly the NEC, which is the highest decision-making of the party. These people are important members of the party. I know where your mind is going. If uh, a member of the BOT does anything, it's his own uh, uh, body that will suspend him in line with the support of the other organs of the government. It's not just for the NWC to wake up unilaterally and okay. do so. All right, so we're winding down. So what does the Tom Ikimi, uh, I mean, the dis disciplinary committee that he's in, what role do they play here? That's what I told you earlier they are doing. They are in the Southwest. They are living today to come back. Huh? They have aggregated all the opinions of the feuding parties and where allegations have been leveled. So that as this gale of suspension, reconciliation, and um, addressing of the problem is concerned, we will be able to, within that time frame, put back the party in order. So that by first quarter of next year, we will not be you know, contending with the in-house uh, disunity. We will be facing the main enemy, again, I repeat, in capital letter, you know, the APC, so that so, we can be able to retrieve uh, Nigeria's uh, hope back. So who is missed? Which group, uh, which uh, committee or body is Mr. Luguangba and the legal advisor going to appear before? NWC or? Yes, NWC, NWC. yeah. NWC. It's an emergency committee headed by uh, the Deputy National Chairman South, uh, His Excellency Taufik Harapaja. So does the NWC have any position on the court judgment or the developments in River State? Uh, no, we do not have it. It was a decision that came out of the court yesterday and it has vindicated the position that uh, the Amafule led, uh, uh, you know, parliament is the one recognized. Yeah, but, one. but the Commissioner for Information in River State says what was before that court was not the legitimacy of the Amafule group because the president had intervened and said, withdraw your cases. Mm. So, but that matter is going to come up at the Supreme Court. Yes. Meaning that they're not ready to bow or submit mm. to this position. Of yes. Case. And it's within their powers, you know, as provided by But it's by a PDP the... state. So PDP oh. cannot wait in and say, listen, sheath or swords, this is our position, whatever that is. No, it's subjudice. You know, the judgment just came only yesterday and they are taking it. No, but they're going to appeal. So PDP That's cannot tell them, don't appeal. That is part of what the committees are looking into. And that is what I want to preempt the meeting today with the governor of Bauchi State, the chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, and the leadership of the PDP, led by Ambassador Umar Iliad Amago, will be looking into so that mm. all of these troubles will be put um, to a race um, through a, a political um, option because we are tired of all this litigation. It's impeding in the progress of the party uh, in its place to provide a desirable uh, opposition for the country. All right, we do thank you and appreciate you all taking our time to come on this morning in spite of the shadows that you have lined up for you. Thank you again. And that's uh, Mr. Ibrahim Abdullah, who is the now acting National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party.